All right. So I was just highlighting what McKinley Wright just told us, which is uh, don't show me the highlights, show me the mistakes. And that's something that he learned through maturity of saying, okay, I want to know what I did wrong to correct it. Um, curious, just your opinion on, on McKinley seeking that out and how it has improved him. Yeah, Andy, I think it's just a, another step in the, the, the maturity process that kids go through. And uh, especially so many kids today with social media, they, they, they want to be hearing about the great things that are going on and, and all the good things that are happening to them or to their friends. And they don't want to look at the dark side sometimes. And I think uh, at some point as you become an adult, and McKinley has become an adult right before our eyes over the last four years, you realize that that's, that's really not the way you take the next step. And I think he realized that this off season. And, you know, it's one thing to have a player in your office watching film, but it really takes hold when they, they take it uh, upon themselves to really dive into what is holding them back and what, uh, what's going to, what's it going to take to, to make that jump. And McKinley knows We've talked about it for the last two years. It's the turnovers. It's not the assists. He's a great playmaker. It's about limiting those turnovers. And uh, he's never going to be perfect, but but I think his decision-making and uh, can get better. And I think uh, the film room is a good place to do that. You know, Chad, the other thing he said, and uh, this was – I don't think you could have scripted this any better for recruiting, uh, when he said that it, it really was the best decision of his life. And, and he was a great example of how – you could spend all your time recruiting someone for four years and not get them. And here's a player who you barely recruit because he wasn't available. And bam, he comes to you when uh, things don't work out at Dayton or Indiana or wherever he was going to ultimately end up. Uh, and yet he says this was the perfect fit for him and the way it all came about. Uh, what does that say about uh, recruiting and how uh, you can make these marriages um, in a non-traditional format and yet they can work out so well? Well, the old adage, Andy, you'd rather be lucky than good. You know, that's how I feel as a coach to, to, to coach McKinley Wright. He, he might feel like it's the best decision that he ever made to come to Colorado. And I feel like it's the best, best decision we ever made to, you know, to, to recruit him when he became available and, and, and when we uh, had a need for, for him. So uh, I couldn't think of a better uh, young man. And uh, uh, I couldn't be luckier. It's funny. I was thinking about this the other day. Uh, there's a lot of pictures in our building of Josh Scott, who to me was the epitome of what a student athlete is. And I remember when Josh Scott graduated, you know, whenever it was, I, I lose track of the years now, but I remember thinking I might not be lucky enough to ever coach another young man like Josh Scott. And then along comes McKinley Wright. And they're two totally different players, two totally, totally different kids from different backgrounds, but they, they are kind of cut from the same cloth when it comes to just being the epitome of what it means to be a Colorado Buffalo basketball player. They, they're, they're bought in, they have, you know, their feet on the ground, they work hard, they're coachable, they're, they're just a joy to be around every day. And, and so, you know, when McKinley graduates and, and moves on, you know, uh, we got to find another one like him. And there's only one McKinley Wright, but we need to find somebody like him to, uh, to come in and help run this team. Tad, you, you are very active uh, within the NABC and uh, coaches and peers across the country uh, of getting this season off the ground. It's going to be like a season none of us have ever experienced. Uh, it's a year like any, none of us have had in, in our lives. Um, coaching with a mask on, officials wearing a mask when they communicate, uh, spread out benches, uh, so many other logistical things that are going to have to go well on a game management basis, on a daily basis, let alone the daily testing and, and making sure everyone's negative. Uh, to get to this point, how difficult was it for all the parties, all the stakeholders to get someone on the same page to make this happen here in two weeks time? It's been really difficult and we, we couldn't be here without, you know, without our administration. You know, for, for us at Colorado, it starts with Rick George and, and Phil Stefano, our chancellor, who, who I think has a great appreciation for, you know, the work that our student athletes of, of all sports put in to uh, perfecting their craft and they, they came to Colorado to be able to, you know, play in games and, and, and compete. And so uh, a lot, a lot of credit goes to them. And then a lot of credit goes to our players, Andy, you know, as coaches, we coach and that's all we want to do. We want to get in the gym and coach and, 
and be around the guys. But the players have to stay healthy for that to happen, and they've done a tremendous job. Uh, and most of our guys have been here since June the, June the 7th, and uh, they've done an exemplary uh, uh, job of, of handling themselves off the court because we, uh, we know that at Colorado, you know, the, the, the virus, we're going to keep it out of our building. We're going to keep it, you know, out of our facilities as best we can, and we've, we've been successful doing that. Our medical staff deserves a lot of credit in, in, in the protocols that they've put in place to allow that to happen. But again, it comes back to our student athletes and our players that when they leave this arena and we know they're negative, they, we know they don't have the virus, that they do the best they can to not contract it when they're away from here and, and come back the next day. And, and knock on wood, we've been very, very fortunate with that and, and the credit goes to them. So a, a lot of hands uh, played a part in getting to this point. And, but now we've come this far, it's just, it's just uh, really critical. We, we get to that start of the season. I want to see that, that ball be tipped up for us on November 25th.